Thank you, Barry. Uh, 22 minutes past two is now the time. Now, how to do everything and be happy is the bold statement and the new book by Peter Jones, who's with me in the studio now. And just to make it clear from the outset, he's not the guy from Dragon's Den, nor has he a department store in Sloan Square. <laughs> Peter, good afternoon to you. Hello, Mark. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. You're Peter Jones. Yes. And, um, and, and what Peter Jones, the one that's sat opposite me right now, now. Whereabouts are you from, first of all? Uh, well, I was actually born in Chelmsford, here in uh, Chelmsford, but I live now in South End on Sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, up until uh, two years ago, I worked in credit card banking, helping to make rich men even richer. And uh, that sort of stuff. I know. How can you live with yourself? Well, I'm, 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 you know, paying the price now. I'm sort <laughs> of like <laughs> redressing the balance. I suppose, in a way, then, when you've done a job like that, it's no wonder that you would want to, to go in <laughs> pursuit of. Happiness, happiness and 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 how to do everything well it was actually you know working in credit card banking was a lot of fun there was a lot of very nice people and it and um i was a i was a fix-it man i used to fix problems and that sort of stuff and i used to uh, go in and you know make make find solutions to things mm. and so and I, i'd been doing that for about 20 years and so all i really did was take take those skills and then apply them to to a problem in my own life that i needed to fix which was you know um finding happiness becoming happy now, there was a, a particular a catalyst to this, wasn't there, yes. in your life? Just yeah, tell us right, about yeah. that. Well, my wife uh, died of a brain hemorrhage six years ago. Um, I was off to... Um, we had a place in Croatia, and she took me to Stansted Airport, and uh, she, she literally uh, passed out and um, never regained consciousness. She had a brain hemorrhage, and that, and that was it, and she died. Were and you with her at the time? Yeah, I was. I were, literally, she parked up, waved... Uh, I walked off towards the concourse, I waved goodbye to her, and uh, when I turned around, the car was still there. Hmm. And um, I thought that was very odd. And I walked back towards the car, and um, and I found her, and the next thing, you know, all hell seemed to break, break loose. There was a police police officer with me, and um, yeah, it was it was chaotic, mm. and it was it was it was the stuff of nightmares, really. Yeah. Um, and and when the dust settled, you know, um, in the following days and weeks that followed, um, I started to feel immensely guilty. That was that was the f you know first thing that came back. Every crossword we'd ever spoken to each other, every argument we'd ever had, you know, they all all came back to haunt me. Yeah. But when those things had sort of like subsided, there was a, there was a another guilt that I was left with, and it was the guilt that um, I wasn't happy, wasn't particularly happy and probably hadn't been for a long time. I couldn't remember ever really being happy. There'd been happy moments and, and most of them had been down to Kate, but um, it wasn't my default setting, if you like. And I thought, you know, I'm just about, I'm turning 40 very, very shortly, this was a few years back, mm. and I thought, this this can't go on, life's too short, as, you know, it'd been mm. de demonstrated by my wife and thought I needed to do something about it. So I, I set, set off on the pursuit of happiness. So... Did somebody or, or a group of people teach you how to do that or, or was it a kind of self-taught, organic, strength of mind process? Um, I, I I tackled it in the way, the only way that I know how. I, I tackled it like a... Um, like a, a problem in credit card banking. You know, when these, these chaps have said to me, Peter, we want to earn an awful lot more of, out of our customers or, you know, our call centre isn't processing enough calls or... Um, you know, bad debt is, uh, is is running away. You know, when they used to sort of give me these problems, then I used to be, you know, one of many who would sort of find solutions. Mm. Um, those were those were problem solving skills, and I just took those and I thought, okay, well, what, what, how, what would I do if this was a problem in in banking? How would I fix it? And so that's what I started to do. I started to just make lists and 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 um, brainstorm and come up with ideas and that sort of thing. And the first thing I tried to do was to eliminate unhappiness. Um, so I started making a list of all the things that made me unhappy and then set about crossing those things off the list. Um, and I would write down everything from, you know, the, the fact that you can't seem to buy a normal lettuce, you can only buy bags of lettuce, to the, you know, to phoning up call centres and that sort of thing. I just used to try and get rid of those things. And it took me a, f it took me a few weeks, maybe even months, to discover that, you know, the more things I wrote on my list, my oog list as I called it, you know, because it made me go oog, 
Um, it doesn't matter how many t things I crossed off, there was always more things to add to the list until the list itself was something I really didn't enjoy doing. Because they do say that, that <laughs> making a list... Yeah can be beneficial in circumstances like this, you know, actually having it written down. Yeah. Well, for me, me personally, that's how it, that um, lists bring order to the to the thought, you know, in your thoughts in your head, they don't seem to sort of, you know, they can be quite random, can't they? And they yeah. can shoot off in different directions. Writing things down, I find, is a way of clarifying my thoughts and that sort of thing. Um, so it, for, lists feature quite heavily in the book, and, and the reason for that is because, uh, you know, once you've got something written in front of you, it's, it's more tangible. You can do something with it, in my experience. So let's go through the process then. OK. Uh, in, a, in a kind of nutshell about how to do everything <laughs> and be happy, because it, it, you touch on in the book the, the whole work-life work balance, thing, yes. which is a pretty difficult thing to get right, isn't it, for a lot of people, and most impossible people. In, in a lot of cases as well. Yeah, most people, uh, we do these things in our, in our workshops, like we, you know, once a month we do workshops and that sort of stuff, and um, I normally give this exercise to, to people, I say that in no more than 30 seconds, um, try and think of something in the last 24 hours that you did that wasn't work, Assuming that the definition of work includes not just going to the office, but anything that you have to do or need to survive. So that includes like opening, paying the bills, opening the post, going to you know doing the groceries, that sort of stuff. And most people struggle to think of three things. And the, those that do think of three things, it's usually something like eating, sleeping, and watching television. Mm. Um, and the what you find is, or what I found is that. Uh, most people, and myself included a couple of years ago, have quite a dreadful work-life balance, particularly as work isn't necessarily something that they enjoy doing an awful lot. I mean, you you know, you've got a fantastic job, and now I've got a fantastic job as well, and I could work, you know, I do work all day long every day. Uh, but And that is one of the solutions, you know, take uh, what you're doing on a daily basis and turn it into something you love doing. That's a way of getting around it. But other solutions are to literally just get more fun into your life so that you address that work-life balance. So we're back to the lists, I guess. Yeah, well, and yes. Identifying what makes you happy. Yes, and yes. writing that down and kind of pursuing it, I suppose. Yes, yeah. An awful lot about the book is just fi uh, just working out what it is that you want. Um, and that is quite a difficult thing because, uh, you know, as kids we we're always asked by, um, by parents, teachers, that sort of thing, what is it do you want? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for tea? What do you want to do this weekend? Those sort of things. But as you get older, um, we stop asking ourselves those questions, especially if we've got people who rely on us, you know, children or elderly parents or, or you know, that sort of stuff. It, we've ceased to, ceased to question or ceased to ask ourselves the question, what is it that I want? Mm. And, and, yeah, and one of the things that the book does is, uh, is, is try to get you to think more about what it is that you want mm. and then work out how to get it. And tell us about Boxing Day, because Boxing Day features in one of the chapters of the book. What is the Boxing Day theory? Boxing Day is possibly the most popular uh, idea um, in the book, which is why it's right up front um, uh, at the start. And basically, it came about because that first Christmas after my wife had passed away, my mother, who was worried about... Um, how I'd be feeling over the Christmas period, uh, invited me over to hers for Boxing Day. And um, I th thought about it for a few moments and then decided, no, I'm going to do what Kate and I used to do, which uh, we used to spend it just me and her. It mm. used to be our day. Mm -hmm. So, um, And we used to get up and we'd open a bottle of champagne and then we'd look at our gifts from the day before and perhaps we'd go for a walk and uh, watch some trashy telly, some Christmas movie, something like that. And so this particular Boxing Day, the first one uh, uh, after she died, I did exactly that. I got up and I opened a bottle of champagne and I went for a walk and I looked at the presents and I emailed friends that I hadn't spoken to in a while. And at the end of the day, I felt like I'd had, you know, a week's holiday. I felt rested and relaxed and um, happy. Mm. And, I, and I started to think to myself, well, you know, it's such a shame that Boxing Day is just one day a year. And wouldn't it be great if this was Boxing Day was a monthly thing? Which is when I asked my, the question to myself, you know, well, why can't it be every single month? And so uh, every single 
months since then, which is about 800 times, I have a Boxing Day and I've had one every month every month since, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the rules of Boxing Day allow <laughs> you to... to say, yeah. Yeah. What's that entail exactly? Well, you can... You... Cold turkey? No, no, no. You can do, no, it's, <laughs> it's literally a day when you have no plans. Yes. You, don't, you can't pre-plan it. You can prepare for it, but you can't pre-plan it and you you get up and you let the day unfold you know um given the you know your heart the opportunity and uh, and, and the moment mm. and you just live in the moment for that day and you do whatever it is you want to do and if you do it right you should feel very rested and, and as though you've had you know a, a week-long holiday um and the Boxing Day rules, you know, they state you can, you can't cancel Boxing Day, but you can move Boxing Day. So if if the twenty sixth of every month doesn't doesn't you know isn't um, doesn't work for you, that doesn't matter. You can you can move it around as and when, um, uh, and that that tends to work for me, and it and it's worked for loads of other people, and it's a very popular idea. What do you say? I'm playing devil's advocate here, yep, Peter. Go so ahead. All the people that are shouting at their radio now go, I've got four kids. I work every hour. God sends. I don't have time for a boxing day. What I'd say is that we're talking about 12 days out of 365. And um, I'm not suggesting you have to take, take a day off work or use up any of your you know, valuable vac- vacation time. I'm talking about, you know, doing... At clawing back one day a month for you. I mean, an awful lot of people, for, uh, people under the age of about 30 or under the age of 25, whenever I talk about Boxing Day, they stare at me blankly and a lot of them say, well, haven't you just reinvented Saturday? And and that, I think, is the essence of what what happens to you when you get to a certain age. When you get to our age, Mark, um, you know, weekends suddenly become a time when you're you know, shipping the kids from one place to another when you have to do the shopping, when you have to wash the car and all that sort of stuff. All I'm talking about is reclaiming one day, maybe a Saturday, Mm. a month Mm -hmm. of the year. Everybody can do it. I don't care how busy you say you are. Mm -hmm. Um, It's sort of a general advice that that you're giving here, and everybody is different. I I was just thinking it might be a nice idea to kind of get you back on a semi-regular basis and get a listener in each time. Yeah. He's maybe having... Like a fix-it. Yeah is having problems in their life and, and trying to sort of find happiness and not succeeding. Yeah. And like a kind of in the psychiatrist chair thing almost. OK, I'm winning. I'm, I'm gaming. <laughs> I think it might be quite interesting. We might try that. Uh, but in the meantime, it's lovely to have you with us and to kind of point us in the right direction. Can there. I just say that we're doing Happy Club tomorrow night? You can tell us about Happy Club. The, uh, Happy Club is every month, uh, last Thursday of uh, every month, and it's at 8 pm. It takes place in Southend on Sea at the Therapy Life Centre, which is just down the road uh, from Southend General Hospital. If you key Happiness Club into Google, I'm pretty sure you'll find all the details pretty quickly. A lot of people with big grins on their faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good fun. <laughs> Come along. I have to say, this book is laid out very nicely as well. You know, you see some sort of self help books and things like this. And they're a bit sort of complicated and jargonese and all the rest of it, but this is actually quite nicely laid out. So, Well, thank you very much for saying. Hats off to you for that. Uh, How to Do Everything and Be Happy by Peter Jones uh, is out now. Could be the answer to your prayers. It's published by HarperCollins. Thanks, Peter.